next era is a special kind of utility stock. Because normally they pay out a high dividend but don't really have share appreciation, next era has a fairly low dividend at 2.5% and a fairly good appreciation. Now the stock has moved nowhere in around 3 years and is it maybe a buying opportunity? Let's see. On the books the company is fairly profitable, overall growing earnings. Revenue also growing over time but to be honest there was only a big bump after 2022 and right now revenue has kind of moderated to normal levels. But overall slight growth over time, not big, it's utilities. However what has grown massively at this company is the debt. They currently have a net debt of 81 billion dollars. Now why is that the case? They are not free cash flow positive. They have not been free cash flow positive in a long time. But they're making strong operating cash flow which has been growing over time so their margins on the revenue have been growing. But at the same time they have spent way more in capital expenditures than what they bring in. 13 billion in operating cash flow, 26 billion in capital expenditures. So basically they're building up huge amounts of assets right now. And for that we need to know how Next Era Energy makes its money. They have two business segments, Florida Pacific and Light and Next Era Energy Resources. This is mostly just their legacy Florida business. This is what you expect with every utilities provider. And this is their big renewable energy segment. Most of revenue still comes from the legacy business. However, when we look at the net income, we can see the margins in the renewable segment are way better. It makes sense. Once you plop down a solar panel, it doesn't cost much. You don't really have to buy a lot of fuel. Maintenance usually on for at least wind turbines for example is higher than a coal power plant but in exchange you don't need to buy wind. Now I'm not gonna go into if we should have our grid all renewable or something. This is not what this is about. This is about making money but however the margins on renewable are fairly better and we can see that operating income 2.7 billion versus 3.1 billion. However now we come to the important thing. The cash flow. Most of the net cash generated comes from the legacy Florida business. 4.4 billion dollars and the capital expenditures here were 4.26 billion. But now we look at the renewable segment, 2.3 billion dollars of net cash provided, capital expenditures, 10 billion. This is just for the last six months. This is where they're burning the cash. They're investing heavily into renewables. And this is also why their debt is rising so so fast. This is partially funded by just taking on debt, partially funded by selling off parts of this business. Not all of this renewable energy business is owned by them. They sold off chunks of it. Common shareholders equity in the renewable business is $38 billion. Non-controlling interest $10 billion. So the shareholders own around 80% of the renewable business and their debt would probably be much much higher if they didn't sell off parts of it. And this debt is already heavily costing them. Currently $1.3 billion in the last 6 months. That's times 2. So $2.6 billion per year in interest payments. The operating revenue is $28 billion. Nearly 10% of the operating revenue is now currently just spent on paying the interest on the debt. Utilities are known historically as being reliable dividend payers with not much volatility but you shouldn't be paying out 4 billion dollars in dividends per year when your free cash flow is minus 13 billion. I know on the books you're writing a positive. If we would stop investing in growing, if we would just have our current assets we would be massively profitable. That's what they're saying. They're saying basically hey if we're not investing in growth we just have our current capacity. We write that off over time. Our current investment is making us 6 billion dollars per year. However when I look at the growth this company has experienced. Of course it's volatile with electricity prices. If electricity prices are low you're not gonna make much money. If electricity prices are high they make a lot of money. But when I look currently 25 billion they didn't even double revenue in 10 years. I'm not saying that is very slow growth for utility. For utility that's fairly decent growth. But at the same time they took on 50 billion dollars in net debt are still massively negative in free cash flow and have diluted you a lot. Plus not even all of that revenue belongs to you. And I understand when a company investing in the future but when you're spending 13 billion more than you take in and that is not just like they're investing 13 billion. No their capex is 26 billion of it. They do not say how much of it is maintenance capex. A lot of companies show you maintenance capex and growth capex. I couldn't find anything for that on next era. So then I just have to think, if I stop growing that renewable energy segment, how much money are we gonna be making? Because I don't believe the numbers that are on the book right there. That 6 billion. They're telling me once they cut capex, that means capex would go down to 7 million. I don't believe that's gonna happen. Maybe it's gonna happen. Maybe it can happen. But in the meantime, the management is spending 26 billion dollars per year on renewables. Not all on renewables. It's around 20 billion on the renewable segment. And I don't think that's gonna pay off as much. The growth has not happened yet. Yes, electricity demand is gonna be growing nationwide because of AI and data centers. This is a big bet. And I don't think it is as safe as the management makes it seem to be or investors take it. Sure, the stock had a great run because, you know, it's renewables. They're getting away from this hated 
old utilities business. But is this 20 billion plus investment gonna pay off? 26 billion per year, they make less in revenue. I don't think this is gonna pay off as big as you think. And of course, you get this property plan and equipment, and the tangible book value is growing. But the tangible book value is $21 a share, one quarter of where the stock is right now. So there is no margin of safety if it doesn't pay off. So I'm not gonna invest in this company. Maybe it works out. Maybe revenue is gonna explode. That's what it needs to happen. Analyst thinks the company is known as straight growth path, 9%, 6%, 8.3%, 7%. That is high utility score. But are we going to be able to cut back the CapEx to acceptable levels where they make a lot of free cash flow? Will the dilution stop? And yes, you can maybe buy the stock for the dividend for 2.44% and say, hey, if this is also growing revenue, it's utilities. Nice dividend while growing. But you got to remember this dividend, uh, that is not money that the company is producing. That dividend is borrowed money. Maybe pays off, maybe revenue is gonna explode and then the stock grows further. But currently, I just see highly indebted utilities, not very fast growing. It's selling off the growing part of a business to other outside investors to fund this. I can just imagine how much debt they would be in if they didn't sell off that much of a business. So for me, I'm gonna pass on the stock. Maybe if it falls to tangible book value for me, but that's not gonna happen. That is never gonna happen. So. I'm out of it for now. I'm happily passing on this. What do you think? Write down below. Have a good day.